be me. An eight-year-old, half-white, half-black kid that grew up in the Deep South. Who loved television and movies, but had absolutely no role models to look up to. He was too white for black role models and too black for white role models. And there weren't any people at the time who claimed the middle. And even if there were, you have to understand that there are levels to it. There's some half black people who look like Halle Berry. And they're really good at blending in. And there are some half black people that look like Wentworth Miller. You'd never even know that they were. By the way, that's the guy from Prison Break. See, growing up, I didn't feel like I fit anywhere. For me, normal was this distant dream I thought of but could never achieve. Normal was something I wanted but could never attain. I couldn't be normal by hanging out with the black crowd, and I couldn't be normal by hanging out with the white crowd. I just had to be stuck in the middle without a place to call my own. And I thought that was how my life was going to be. Until PBS did what PBS does best. Daytime programming, after school for students. They had a whole lineup of shows that I grew up falling in love with, but there was one that stuck out to me in particular. A magical world where a bus could change into cells, into dinosaurs, and navigate through space without harming anyone. Fantasy, but definitely good TV. A magical world where an anthropomorphic lizard could be more human-like than a human could, well before Geico popularized it with a gecko. Fantasy that makes great TV. A magical world where half of a class was made up of students that had melanin in their skin and it wasn't a school that was in the ghetto. Fantasy. Risky TV. The first two definitely being more plausible than the third in the world we live in. But this was the show that spoke to me in a level I don't think it spoke to most people. I'll explain why. According to the National Board of Education Statistics for the year 2013, 25% of students are Hispanic, 17% of students are black, 50% of students are white, and only 3% of students are two or more races. That means that there would be three students that are white, one and a half students that are Hispanic, and just under one student that are black. And to make up for the two or more races, Miss Frizzle needs to be in a relationship with a man named Darius, and she needs to be 1.2 weeks pregnant with his child. That would be the magic school bus in the year 2013. We're gonna jump back 10 years to 2003. 19% of students are Hispanic, 17% of students are black, 59% of students are white, and the amount of students that are two or more races is enough to warrant a not applicable. So if we were to translate that once again, it would be a little over one Hispanic student, just under one black student, three and a half white students, and the amount of two or more race children to be represented, Miss Frizzle can be in a relationship with Darius, but they must not be getting frisky. Jump back 10 more years to 1993. If we follow the trend of the data, it should look something like this. 13% of students are Hispanic. 18% of students are black. 68% of students are white. And the amount of two or more race students is so small, people only speak of it as a fantas fantastical thing that may happen at some point in the future. Now, to make this make sense, that means that there should be around four white students, just one black student, and two-thirds of a Hispanic student in our wonderful class of Miss Frizzle. And to make up for the two or more races, Miss Frizzle needs to be single and never have met a man named Darius. That would be the Magic School Bus in 1993, but in 1994, the Magic School Bus aired with three white students, two black students, and one Hispanic student. And all of a sudden, an animated cartoon became a role model for a kid and spoke to him in ways that nothing else on television could. Because this show was just like him. Half white and half not. 
Now this show never brought me the normal that I've been looking for since I was eight years old. Never brought me stability or comfort. It didn't usher in an era of making television in the way that human diversity is as a normal way of making TV and movies. It didn't usher in a normalcy in my life where I was treated like something cool. It didn't even usher in a normalcy that I could wake up thinking that I had a place and I could fit. It didn't do any of that. But what it did is it put me in the position of Arnold, where as much as I begged for normalcy, I kept hearing time and time again that all I beg for is a normal life. But just like with the frizz, I should look at that normal life and say, no way. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're on Facebook, head over to my page, click a like, Nate Fleming Comedian. If you're on YouTube, click subscribe here and watch the next video here. Now to flip it. If you're on Facebook, head over to my YouTube to subscribe somewhere in the button area. If you're on YouTube, head over to my Facebook and click a like. Links will be in the description below. Thank you so much for your time. Hope you get to leave with either something inspirational, a little funny, or knowledgeable. And if you weren't moved, then come back next time and I guarantee you will be. Thank you.